क्रूरान संसारेश नाराज हवान खिपामी अदस्य अशुभान आसुरेशु एवं जनेशु दिस इज ए भर्स फ्रॉम भगवत गीता दोज हु आर डिराइडिंग अपॉन गॉड गॉड देर इज नो गॉड आई एम गॉड दे आर कॉल्ड Asuras, Asuras, atheist, had demands. The demands the Krishna, Lord Krishna, personally says, the Tanhang Disata Kura. Those who are such envious upon the supreme personality of Godhead, the result is that they are thrown into perpetual ignorance. and born life after life where they cannot understand what is god because they want to uh, forget god therefore god puts them into such condition that they will never be able to understand what is god this is the version from Bhagavad Gita by the supreme personality of God. Uh, that means the condition of the atheists are uh, always abominable. Tāna hang disata kruṇam samsāreṣu narādhama. Samsāreṣu. Samsār means this material entanglement. This is called samsār. And narādhama. they are called the lowest of the human kind because human life is especially meant for god realization self realization so in, in instead of realizing one self and the supreme self if one derides uh, it doesn't want to understand what is god what is god consciousness what is krishna Uh, he is to be understood as the lowest of the mankind. Naradham, adham means lowest. Uh, or, in other words, he is an animal in the form of a man. Naradham means. And birth after birth, birth, uh, such atheist is put into uh, the species of life. Where there is no chance of understanding God, there are different species we have discussed. Even in human society, there are some species or class that it is not possible for them to understand what is God at all. Not even the idea. Generally, even the aborigines. They have got some sense of God. Uh, whenever they find something extraordinary, just like lightning or a great hill or a great tree, they offer their respect. That that is sense of God. Sense of God is there in everyone's heart, uh, unless he is an animal. Everyone's heart there is artificially. We try to drive away this obedience, but uh, there are other, uh, even in the civilized society, there are persons. Uh, they are put into such a circumstances that they will never be able to understand what is God consciousness or what is Krishna consciousness. They are so misfortunate, and as soon as one becomes Uh, godless or forgetful, his uh, eternal relationship with God, then his life is immediately condemned. Sutre purinamba tahana mania vivatva sthapi bhas bhanto bolia. Ei to kolpite artha mane na hi bhai shastra chari kukalpana pasan nijwa. So that. Uh, 
disciple of Prakashananda Saraswati admitted that godlessness in Vedanta Sutra is not the purpose. Uh, actually, by misinterpreting the Vedanta Sutra, they want to establish that there is no God, we are God. Uh, so, after explanation of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, at least there was one convert amongst all the sannyasins, and he was glorifying Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. At the way he said, Kare Krishna Sankirtan, and while he was glorifying Lord Chaitanya, automatically he began to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. Suni Prakashananda Kitu Kahen Vachan. When his disciple was glorifying Lord Chaitanya and his process of teaching, his spiritual master Prakashananda said like this Acharya Agraha Adhaita Vad Sthapite. He admitted Acharya means Sankaracharya. He means here Sankaracharya. Sankaracharya wanted that uh, mm, there is uh, only one Brahma and we are also, we are also Brahma, but he, he wanted his uh, philosophy of monism, uh, dwell in God and living entity separate, uh, they do not admit. They, they admit that God and living entity is the same. It is simply for the time being covered, which is called maya. Mayavad philosopher. So, uh, the Prakashananda Saraswati also admitted that because Sankaracharya wanted to establish his philosophy of monism, therefore he had to cover the real meaning of Vedanta Sutra. Tati Sutra Vakha Kare Onnorite Jani. Onnorite, in a different uh, interpretation. He was a very learned scholar. Uh, if a scholar likes to present something in a different way, just like uh, an expert lawyer, he can get out of the entanglement of law by jugglery of words and interpretation. Uh, he is called a big lawyer. Similarly, there are philosophers uh, who can put this uh, sim- the, the different theories and uh, not admit the existence of God. So Sankaracharya's uh, real purpose was no, no existence of God because he had a very thankless task. He was dealing with the persons who are Buddhists. They did not believe anything except matter. So for them to establish that there is God, it is very difficult. Therefore, he adopted this meant that uh, there is no separate God. We are all God. Uh, you are God, I am God. And a demonic person, if he is addressed, oh, you are God, oh, he becomes very happy uh, because he does not become responsible to any higher authority. Uh, he becomes God. Uh, he can do anything. He can perform any nonsense. Nobody is going to punish him. It is very nice theory that I have become God. Because I have no more... Suppose you yourself become the government of the United States, then you can do anything. It is very nice. I am everything. I am president. I am secretary. I am everything. Therefore, who is going to check me? I can do any nonsense. This is the basic principle of godlessness to avoid the higher authority. Just like already in your country, the class of young stars who are defying any authority, not only in your country and other countries also, that has become a fashion to defy authorities. So this godlessness is also like that, to defy the Supreme Personality of Godhead the, there is no practical difference between Buddha philosophy and Sankar's philosophy. 
Buddha philosophy says that the matter is everything. Beyond matter there is nothing, everything void. And the combination of matter is the source of our miseries. So you make a dismantlement of the matter, nirvana, there will be no more miseries. And Shankar philosophy says that Brahma Sattva Jagan Mitha, it's a little further advanced admitting the spirit, but he says that spirit is impersonal. There is no God, it is impersonal. So practically the same thing. Ultimately it is void or there is no God. But Vedanta philosophy does not say that. Vedanta philosophy, from the very beginning it asserts that athāta brahma jīgāsa, now it is the time for discussion on the absolute truth. And what is that absolute truth? Janmādhasya jata. Absolute truth is the samambonan, substance from which everything emanates. Sei grantha karta chahe samas thapite shaste sahaj artha nahe tahaite. This is the secret of modern fashionable interpretation. If you want to establish, suppose you have got some conviction, and if you want to establish it by evidence of an approved literature, an approved literature, just like Gandhi. Gandhi wanted to establish non-violence from Bhagavad-gītā. He was a, he is known to be a great student of Bhagavad-gītā, but he was not at all. His political theory was that he wanted to conquer over the enemies by non-violent method, non-violent non-cooperation. That was his I mean, it's a theory. Uh, He wanted to uh, get away all kinds of non-violence from the world, uh, all kinds of violence from the world. Uh, So he wanted to prove from Bhagavad-gītā non-violence. But how you can prove non-violence from Bhagavad-gītā? Because Bhagavad-gītā is being spoken in the violent battlefield. but because he wanted to prove non-violence, therefore he says, oh, this Pandavas means this, this Krishna means this, this chariot means this, uh, this uh, Gurus means this, Dharma Khetra means this, Kuru Khetra means this. He has invented and manufactured so many uh, rascal meaning uh, that uh, it is very difficult. Uh, he says that dharma kshetri, in the beginning of Bhagavad-gītā, there is the version dharma kshetri, kuru kshetri, samavītā, yudhusava. Uh, now the very word yudhusava means persons who are desiring to fight with one another. Now how you can prove non-violence? Uh, but he extracts a meaning. This pandava means five senses, and the kuru kshetra means this body, in this way, his interpretation. Therefore, all different interpretations, uh, the Vedic literature, either take Bhagavat, Asimad, Bhagavad Gita, or any Upanishad, the meaning is very clear. Uh, it is sheer foolishness to understand that the meaning is vague. Now I am clearing. I am a great scholar. Uh, I, I can interpret in a different way. So, as a bash them, let the meaning to be cleared by some rascal. You see. He was not himself competent to clear the meaning, but he let the work to be done by some rascal. Oh. That is their interpretation. Oh. Oh. But actually it is not. In every slow, if you know Sanskrit, the, you'll see the meaning is clear. Oh. Just like in the Bhagavad Gita, Dharma Khetri, Kuru Khetri, Samavita, Yudhusava. Uh, there was actual some fight 
between the two cousin groups and they fought at the battlefield of Kurukshetra. That Kurukshetra is still existing. If you go to India, that Kurukshetra, there is a railway station, Kurukshetra, it is about uh, about 150 miles from Delhi, and people go there for pilgrimage. Therefore, it is Dharma Kshetra, the place of religious rites. And in the Vedas, uh, Sam Veda, uh, I think, I don't exactly remember, but one of the Vedas, it is written that Kurukshetra Dharma Jajayat. In the Kurukshetra, that place, if you are, anyone wants to uh, perform religious rites, he should go to Kurukshetra and perform there. It will have better effect. This is the indication in the Vedic literature. Therefore, Kurukshetra is still accepted. Those who travel, wander in pilgrimages, they go to Kurukshetra. Still, the system is going on. If there is a lunar eclipse, they go to Kurukshetra to make some charities. So Kurukshetra is accepted from the very, very long period in the Vedic age as the place of pilgrimage. So it is stated that Dharmakshetra. How can I interpret that this Kurukshetra means this body? And which dictionary he finds this meaning? But People are so foolish because Mahatma Gandhi has interpreted. Oh, it is. Right? Oh. So this is going on. So, say Granta Karta Chahe Samat If anyone wants to establish his own foolish theory, he takes advantage of popular book and try to, tries to explain in his own way. So, in other words, uh, it is clear that Sankaracharya, he wanted to establish his theory of monism and therefore he has explained Vedanta Sutra in his own way. But that is not the actual explanation. What Lord Chaitanya said, that is real explanation. All of them admitted. And the Prakashananda Saraswati, he also admitted. Bhagavatta manite adyaita na jaya sthapan. Now, they wanted to establish the theory of monism, uh, no difference between uh, living entity and God. Uh, one, there is no separate God. Then if, uh, admit, if it is admitted that God is the source of everything, uh, then you have to accept duality. Because the source of everything and the everything emanated, duality. Tati sutri bhakkha vannarite bhagavatta manite addaito na jaya sthapan atay sarva shastra karaya khanna. Because the whole aim was to get away the existence of God, therefore all the Vedic literature was uh, were interpreted by Shankaracharya in his own way. Uh, still it is going on. Uh, that process is still going on. Uh, although uh, there are uh, I mean, many in, uh, I mean, this explanation of Vedanta Sutra by the Vaishnava Sampradaya, just like Ramanam Charja, Madhya Charja, every Vaishnava Sampradaya uh, has his own explanation of Vedanta Sutra. Don't understand Vedantist means the monopoly by Shankar Sampradaya. No. Uh, but uh, uh, people in general they understand uh, Vedantist means Shankar Sampradaya. Uh, because the devotee class, uh, they do not give much importance to Vedanta. Because they read uh, Simad Bhagavatam, and Simad Bhagavatam is accepted by the Vaishnava Sampradaya, especially by the uh, sect of Ch- Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as the real explanation of Vedanta. Uh, 
Therefore, they do not give any other explanation of Vedanta than Simad Bhagavat. And because the Vaishnava uh, Sampradaya uh, does not give a very much importance to Vedanta Sutra, because the explanation is there, they are reading actually Vedanta Sutra, people misunderstand that the Vedantist, followers of Vedanta, is the Sankar Sampradaya, not this Vaishnava Sampradaya. That is their misunderstanding. Uh, actually, uh, any sampradaya, either um, the Sankar sampradaya, Vedanta sampradaya, if, he, if they have no standing on the Vedanta sutra, uh, they are not recognized. Uh, they are recognized. In the Indian system, is, in the spiritual society, that if you have got any sampradaya particular, uh, then you must present your explanation of Vedanta Sutra. How do you understand Vedanta Sutra? On the basis of that understanding, you will be recognized. So, the Vaishnava Sampradaya, they are also Vedantists. And because Vaishnava Sampradaya, they are concerned with the bhakti, bhakti, and I am to say cult. Therefore, in our society, the Vaishnavas, uh, they were pleased to give me this title Bhakti Vedanta. Uh, that you will explain the Vedanta Sutra. Uh, so, this Bhakti Vedanta title was especially offered to me and do not know why. Uh, that's all. So, the Vedanta means bhakti, devotional service. That is the Vaishnava philosophy. And Vedanta means for the uh, Sankra Sampradaya that there is no God, I am God. Mimamsa kahe ishar hai karme ranga. You know, there are six kinds of philosophies in India. Uh, the Mimamsak philosophy and Shankha philosophy and Nay. Nay means logic. Nay philosophy. Then Mahavad philosophy. Then Patanjal, yoga system. Patanjal philosophy. And at last, this Vedanta philosophy. So there are six kinds of philosophers. Out of them, only the Vedanta philosophy is compiled by Vyasdev. So it is considered that Vedanta philosophy only establishes the existence of God. All other philosophies, uh, they do not admit the existence of their atheistic philosophy. Mimamsa. Mimamsa means uh, they have decided that there is no necessity of worshipping God. Uh, if there is any God, or like, you do your duty nicely, and He will be obliged to uh, award you the required result, then there is no question of flattering Him. That is Mimamsa philosophy. No. No. Uh, just like in government, there are so many departments, uh, so you need not to flatter Him, but uh, you do your duty, you pay your tax, you abide by the laws, then everything will be right. You need not worship any person. Uh, that is their philosophy, mimams, karma mimams. Uh, everyone is under the spell of karma. He, everyone is uh, suffering or enjoying as a result of his past deeds. So the karma mimams and philosophy says there is no necessity of worshiping God. Uh, you do your duty, just like some moralist said, yeah, uh, what is the use of God, God, Hare Krishna? Uh, just do your duty. Uh, so, but he does not know that what is his duty. Uh, the duty is only to worship God and nothing more. That is the duty. Uh, all other duties are uh, mayas, a spell only. Uh, there is no other duty. Uh, because this human life is meant for that duty. Uh, the animals cannot uh, execute that duty. 
only the human being. Therefore, our only duty is to understand God and engage ourselves in that way. So these different kinds of philosophies are there. We shall gradually discuss. Thank you very much.